Okay, how many of you have seen these headlines? Oh my goodness, butter is back. We could eat cheese, we could have bacon. And people went to town on this. And it's crazy because it's been decades. And that's, that's literally what this book is all about. I went back to the Mediterranean diet and before, and where does this whole diet heart health hypothesis come from? Why, we found out that saturated fat raises serum cholesterol levels, raises your risk for cardiovascular disease. And it's been pretty much understood and accepted for decades and decades. So what happened all of a sudden? These two recent meta-analyses happened. One was by Siri Torino et al. in 2010, and then another one in, by Chowdhury et al. in 2014. And they had different studies that they looked at, but they concluded that saturated fat is not correlated with heart disease, despite the fact that we've all known this for decades and decades. So it's interesting because you, you have to be kind of a statistician, because if you just read the conclusion, it's like, oh, OK, I can have my butter and cheese. And it, 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 when you look at it, you have to look at it really carefully. But of course, the health experts looked at it very carefully and went berserk, like this is crazy. There were, I think, 12 um, complaints about the selection, the bias selection of the articles. Here's some of those. There were all these different flaws with the articles. Here's just, I just took a screenshot of the letters by people like Walter Willett, head of Harvard Nutrition, and people just saying, you know, you have to take this down. But the damage was done because the media picked this up. So there were other reasons, like the fact that they compared, many of these studies compared people on a standard American diet that already have high saturated fat intakes to people on a standard American diet that had slightly higher saturated fat intakes, and that's not gonna show any kind of statistical significance. Other things where they used, a lot of the studies used 24-hour diet recall. And do you remember what you had for breakfast yesterday? Quick, right? It's like the least reliable source of a diet uh, study. It's a, not a good way to, it's not a reliable method, methodology. So there were a lot of reasons with this, why they were not well done, well executed studies. And if you really, you could look at them, but you could also look past them. Cochrane reviews are like the creme de la creme of review articles, and they really are rigorous in what they expect in terms of their review. And in 2012, the Cochrane Review stated that replacing saturated fat with other fats, so here's the kicker too, it's not carbs. Refined carbs, and that was what else happened in these two meta-analyses. If you compare saturated fat to processed refined sugary carbs, it's, you're not going to have a benefit. So it's what you're comparing it to. If you compare saturated fat to trans fats, then tr saturated fat may look better. But if you compare saturated fat to a whole grain or complex carbohydrates, then of course it causes heart disease. And that's what this concluded. That's what the American Heart Association and American College of Cardiology concluded in 2014 when they got together and reassessed that the fact that saturated fat is known to increase your LDL, your L lousy cholesterol, your, your bad cholesterol, it also lowers your good cholesterol, your HDL. And essentially, it, it still increases your risk of cardiovascular disease in, in solidarity with all of these decades of information that we have. They recommended that we limit our saturated fat intake to no more than 5 to 6% of total calories. That's really low. And the average American, well, I'll talk about that in a second. This study in 2015 by American College of Cardiology stated replacing, so it depends on what you replace it with. That's why it gets really complicated. Uh, if you replace it with polyunsaturated fats, you have a 25% lower risk of coronary disease. If you replace it with monounsaturated fat, like avocado, olives, you'll get a 15% reduction. And if you replace it with whole grains, you get a 9% reduction. But either way, if you're replacing it, and they ideally say to replace it with polyunsaturated fats, you're gonna have a, a risk reduction. Just recently, a study in 2016 in the Journal of American Medical Association's Internal Medicine concluded that they supported those current dietary guidelines to replace saturated fat with polyunsaturated. Now, this to me is the best argument against nutritionism. Have you guys heard about what, I mean, the idea of nutritionism is, is looking at one nutrient and making decisions. This is a flaw inherent in nutrition data and studying nutrition because we have to kind of look at things like this. But it, it does show that these are, did you, it does show that there are issues. Did you guys see what happened with the sugar industry this week? Because that's a perfect example. So this week, 
the, it came out that in 1967, the sugar industry paid Harvard's, like three researchers at Harvard, a lot of money to put the emphasis on dietary fat and exonerate sugar as a cause of cardiovascular disease. And they were very effective in doing so. Hence the low fat movement where everything, you know, guys were eating those snack well cookies, those fat free cookies. And I was doing that in college. I remember thinking, oh, low fat. I could eat as much as I want of these sugary processed foods. So they found this out, and it's not surprising. But the, but the interesting thing about this is that they're both not so good, but they're nutrients, right? If you're focusing on whole foods and eating the types of foods that we're talking about eating, none of this really matters because both refined sugar and both saturated fat are health damaging. We know that. So it's really about looking at the whole food, the sources of food, and not focusing on one nutrient. And literally, I was packing to walk out the door, and this popped up in my email, and it was another study about the saturated fat and coronary heart disease. The debate goes on. And they actually, I had to say this because I had already written my, written my talk. Um, it had been done for a week, and they actually said in this study, I have to say it because I was like, oh my gosh, that's what I said. The study of diet to disease relationships is one of the most challenging of modern day science. So it's been corroborated, it's not just me. <laughs> but I mean, if you look at food instead, you'll see articles like this, oops, like this, that showed it was the NIH study, and they looked at over half a million people and they, for 10 years, and they concluded that red and processed meat is associated with an increased risk of total mortality, cancer, and cardiovascular disease. If you look at this study, meat independently as a risk factor, 8,000 people, non-vegetarians were 74% more likely to develop type 2 diabetes over 17 years than vegetarians. So if you look at the food groups, it all comes together. That's why you have to look at everything. You can't look at two studies out of hundreds of studies. And you have to really look at it with a big, big picture. That's the lesson.